it's uh, 11 o'clock. We are now almost traveling around one hour for a puffin patrol security thing. Here, there is one. There is one. There is one. Be careful. Yes, we got one. Effie, give me the net. Come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Ah. My goodness. My goodness. You are drama queen. You are drama queen. Ah. Yes, everything is fine. Sweetheart. Now you are happy. Sweetheart. Yes. yes. God. Newfoundland, the place and the land and the ocean is just as much a character in our lives as your brother or sister. You know, we've always been that way because we're isolated, we're an island. Everything here is so interconnected and people feel that because they had to. It was the only way they could survive. Less than two kilometres from the coastlines of Whitless Bay is the Whitless Bay Ecological Reserve. It's a group of islands that spread out from the Whitless Bay region and they're home to the Atlantic Puffin, in Newfoundland's iconic bird. There's over 600,000 pairs of puffins on these islands. They mate every year, they go to sea for four years and when they come back they keep coming here. There's records showing that we have puffins that are up to 20 and 30 years old there, and they come to the same burrows. So it's really important that this ecological reserve was established to protect these birds. Thank you very much. If you look around the community now, they advertise at the home of the Atlantic puffin, and some of their facilities are named after a puffin. The school mascot is a puffin. So it's something that people are proud of. Everybody can resonate with them. The puffin generates a lot of revenue in tourism in Newfoundland and especially in this local area and it creates a lot of jobs. That's a big icon for tourism in Newfoundland, the puffin. It's our provincial bird, you know? So, you know, they, we got, really got to look after them. It has sort of always been a thing. We would see the birds squat all over the road and different things and we just, we knew, obviously, they were confused, but we didn't know anything about that until into the 2000s. That's when we started to learn what the problem was. It could have been many people who came into our town and started the Puff Patrol, and there would have been resistance because it would have been the whole, you're an outsider, how are you telling us what to do? But this is unique because it was Jürgen. And you want to look me in the camera, right? No, you do. I do you. Okay, me. good. Okay, that's good. His presence is vast and it's very open. Everybody knows Jürgen. When I go to the post office or the shop, they say, hey, Puffin Man, and I think it's a compliment. I wouldn't call me in a real in environmentalist because I know people who do this do much more than, than what I'm doing. Is, but we're just taking care as I learned it. I think it's normal to do things like this. When you see something, it's wrong, try to change it. I met Jürgen a long time ago. He was in filmmaking and uh, he had quite a, an array of movie stars. He's, uh, he's his own character. He beats his own drum. And I love this air. It's like champagne, you know? It's, it's so wonderful here. I'm so grateful, and we're all so grateful, that he came in, he saw the situation, and people just then started to come together and just feel good about doing something for their community. I want to know, tonight it's Puffin Patrol again. Are you ready? It was in August, and Elf and me, we watched on the road dead little birds. 
During the day, Jurgen often finds other puffins on the Witless Bay roads who are not so lucky. Every year, hundreds of young puffins, those birds with colorful beaks, lose their way in the waters off Newfoundland and Labrador, ending up on a wing and a prayer. The little puffins have been getting lost in town. So I was asking people here around, what is it? And they told me, don't touch them, their person has been always there. But I thought something is wrong. What could it be? And then you find out that these little dead birds on the road are little puffin chicks. We learned that they come out in the night and they look for light, moonlight in their instinct. But they have no idea, is it moonlight, traffic light, or car light, or garage light, whatever it is. They think light is light, let's go for it. So they fly, and then they stand in the middle of the road, singing two moon, hit by a car. My wife Elfie and myself, we just thought, let's do something, and we did it. I put this on the trees and on the sign on the road that people know in the night where can we deliver the puffins and where the headquarters. And then I put this one here, they are illuminated for the cars. You can put them on the car. You need always a, a short, good name of doing something and Puffin Patrol says everything. Puffin Patrol, dim down, unnecessary light. It's puffing saving time, come in. Okay. So we started to buy gloves. With my gloves. Butterfly nets. In the car I do have the net and the flashlight. I give you the flashlight. Elfie, are you ready? Yeah. Good. And Elfie and me went out the first uh, time to save the little birds. So we go from the flashlight from the left side with the net from the right side. The bird look at the flashlight, I go from the left side and then we got it. We put them then in a little cradle, let them here and next day we let them go. We drove from nine o'clock to almost one o'clock in the night. My smart wife told me, Jürgen, that's not enough. We should not do this alone. We should bring in some people. And then it started rolling. It's 10 o'clock. It depends every day how many we are saving. It could be 10, it could be 20, every night out. We put them then in a little cradle and then the next morning is the release. Driving around, you're walking around, Good. low years 100, sometimes 800, 900, Good. every night. Driving 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and people were knocking on my door, uh, bringing birds in front of the door. It's puffing saving time. Every night. Driving around, Good. you're walking around. I'm saying we saved over in total more than 10,000. Sometimes the whole shed was full of birds. It's puffing saving time. Every night. Wait, wait, wait. 9 to 11 Good. and 11 to 12. It's puffing saving time. Every night. Puffing patrol. Yes. Then it came Good. to our mind. Wait, wait, wait. It's too large, too big for me and for us alone. And we were so happy that we have now this spread to the Canadian Park and Wilderness Society. And they decided to take over the puffin patrol as uh, their issue. I don't think we can ever fill Jurgen's shoes. So thank you for coming out. When you have a, a program like this, you start to find out in your community who is conservation minded, who maybe they feel that this isn't an issue. Uh, my name is Suzanne Dooley. I am with the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society. We help coordinate and facilitate this program. To this day, even though it you know, seems to be a very good news story, still there is a bit of opposition as well. We can't please everybody. But I know there is a lot of opposition within the community for and against like every project. Some of our core volunteers that we have, they see that and they feel that as well too. Sometimes uh, the province makes the national news for all the wrong reasons. That was the case last week. What well, is an ironic twist. Witless Bay did indeed make the national news because of what looked like an effort to silence the citizens on social media. Witless Bay Town Council had unanimously passed a motion to look into retaining independent criminal lawyer to review recent social media accusations against the current town council. That didn't sit very well with Lorna Yard, who has been embroiled in a battle with council over the development of Ragged Beach. Lorna joins me live in the studio. It's nice to see you, Lorna. <laughs> my reputation in town. Well, 
I probably wouldn't want to imagine it, but I don't know. I just have to think about that for a second. I'm surprised by that question. <laughs> I think Lorna would describe herself as an activist. Lorna is very much involved in the local community because she's a fighter and she fights for the environmental. And I know that she is one of the strong um, opponents of the Ragged Beach Group and actually has a Facebook page. She runs the Ragged Beach Newsline, which is all the news about the what's going on and so forth. I have this streak in me where I just, I do stand up for things I believe in. And so I never really got involved in the Puff Patrol too much until the Ragged Beach threat happened. So Ragged Beach is um, a dark coast right now. There are no houses, there is no light pollution, and it is directly across from the ecological reserves. And it would never occur to us to build a house there because if you put in a development on that coastline, I believe, and many of us believe, it will be absolutely catastrophic for the reserve. But when you get people coming in from outside, they just view a piece of land and say, wow, this is amazing, I would like to live here. And so we have a group of people fighting so hard for what we see as the benefits of protecting our environment, of protecting the puffins. And then we have people who are really just concerned with profit and monetizing coastlines. Oh, there's some berries. Not quite ripe, but some are more than others. So my name is Anne-Marie Churchill. Um, I'm a landowner here in the Ragged Beach area and a Newfoundlander. Yeah, so I grew up in Newfoundland uh, and I grew up about 30 minutes from here in the city of St. John's. Um, and so when we came back, we just really wanted to be close to the ocean, in nature, um, so that's how we ended up here. We actually were hiking here one day and um, looked it up when we got home and there was land for sale. We were told from the very beginning, there will be a group there who are going to oppose you. They've opposed in the past to anyone who's tried to develop in this area um, because they don't want any houses down here, but it's private property. So we thought, okay, well, we'll deal with it. What do we need to do to make this okay? Like, what do you want? And they said, we're not here to negotiate. We're here to stop you. We want no development down here. When the Churchills put in their application in 2010 to have that rezoned, at the time there was just a collective scream of outrage from the province, from the world. And so this right here is Ragged Beach, so you can see that this is directly across. Now here you'll see this is Whittles Bay, and here you'll see this subdivision back here. So if you look at this subdivision and you look at Ragged Beach, you can see how close Ragged Beach is and you just look straight out, you're looking straight at the Whitless Bay Ecological Reserve. The island is directly across from it. We live in a town of 1,200 people, and our town council got over 1,400 letters against rezoning that area. They got 11 in support. I have here a letter from Bill Mantovecchi. Bill is, um, he is a seabird biologist. He's known the world over that of all the ecological seabird reserves in Newfoundland and Labrador, the Whitless Bay Ecological Reserve is the one in closest proximity to coastal communities and is the one most at risk to human activities and development. This is a letter from a descendant of a Whittles Bay resident. This is a man who lives in New York, a subdivision with more to come and the most achingly beautiful stretch of coastline in Newfoundland. Beautiful. Not just because our eyes tell us so but because our hearts do as well. And those letters were just ignored. Our provincial government ignored them. And, and that's when the war in this town started. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have a long agenda tonight, so uh, you'll have to uh, just bear with me. Okay, committee. I'd like to uh, take the time to appoint the border to uh, concern legal matters of the town 
and I'd like to pass out these motions. Uh, these are concerns with motions that I want to put on. Do I have a seconder? Do I have a seconder? Do I have a seconder? Excuse me. Do I have a seconder? Sit down, please. Do I have a seconder? You're out of order. Council, with recommendations, there's a similar issue. Is that you're going into the young guy? Local town council here does not subscribe to um, issues of environmentalism or um, sustaining our natural assets. Our local council, their mandate is development, big development, uh, big business. That's their mandate. Where there's more development, there's more lights. And so we want to protect Ragged Beach. There are subdivisions in Whitless Bay, as there are in, in all communities, and I think when you start new projects or whatever, you, you look back on them and say, well, I wish I had done something a little bit different. Uh, clear cutting maybe in, in a couple of the divisions here, or subdivisions may have been excessive. But there is something to be said for the private landowners that live within that line of fire. Who am I to say that they can't build? and I'm an individual resident, I'm not speaking from a council. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't speak against. I think it's insane that it seems to me any reasonable person that would walk down on that beach and say, let's put up some houses, has got something wrong with their thinking. I was shocked the first time they called us developer. And I think this group know that that's a word that gets people, so they've used it. They've called us the developers. No, we're landowners. That's what I call me. I'm a landowner and I want a house on my land. I would say absolutely it's not a story of development versus environment. I think it is a story of legitimate environmental causes being hijacked to stop some private landowners in a small area in Newfoundland from using their land. Their argument is if we put a house here, then we're adding lighting and we're adding development to the area. And my argument is that Newfoundlanders have always built along the shoreline, but it can be done respectfully in this town. People have built lots of development, but what we've done here is a thousand times different. We didn't clear cut. At the most, we get a gazebo or a house for our boys. That's it. I don't want subdivisions, I don't want hotels, I want peace. I feel I'm an environmentalist, so I've had to question myself. Is this going to hurt the birds? I don't believe one house is. This is where I do all my thinking. This is where I come when I'm feeling a bit um, stressed. The puffins have been hijacked. Like, I used to love the puffin calls. Now I hear it and I almost get nauseated because I know it's been hijacked by people who know how to do it, who are good marketers, who are good sellers, who do use social media. So we have been vilified. This has been put on Facebook that we're horrible people and they spin something to get their own way. There's always in small towns uh, personal conflicts and usually they settle it over a period of time. But right now because of social media and Facebook, there, there seems to be quite a lot of uh, texting and tweeting going on. The scary part is that that amplification is dangerous. Like someone said, oh, they don't own that land? We'll burn down their gazebo. And I worry about that because if you get people who don't think things through or may not be stable, that could happen. Like, I think there could be real consequences. And I've said, if this continues to go on, somebody's going to get hurt. You know, I, I haven't always acted honorably. And there have been times when frustration and stress got to me. You know, puffins can't speak for themselves. Rocks and beaches can't speak for themselves. And 
And whether or not my head is screwed on straight, that's up for debate, but my intentions are, are true. So we're going, uh, we're driving down Gallows Cove Road here now in Willis Bay. We're gonna go down to Ragga Beach. It's at the very end of this road. I always draw my strength and my comfort from Ragged Beach, and so that's why I feel so strongly. So I come here a lot in the fall and generally in the off season, but during the summer, not so much anymore, just because of uh, the whole situation surrounding us. I can't stay reasonable and rational, I, and, and I don't want to lose control. I don't want to be upset and angry all the time. I want to be reasonable, and I want to understand where they're coming from. So my fantasy is we'll work together, but I don't think that will happen. So as you can see, we're, we're right at the feet of the ecological reserve. We're directly across from it. So. Um, our position is that if you put development in here, I mean, it's going to be shining right at the reserve. And we're already facing a lot of challenges. Y'all can come on through. Izzy. Uh-oh. Hi, I'm Anne-Marie. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm the person that you love to hate all the time. I don't hate you. Well, some of the we agree to this. Man, holy cow, it's pretty wild when you don't well, know us and have never met us. We didn't start the fire. Surprising. Oh, well, we bought land and then it went personal. So I'm just saying, you don't know us, so it'd be great to get to know each other sometimes. But so you, you know, actually... when you bought the land, you knew you couldn't build here. That's not true. We have. We I have, have a quote in a newspaper that you said that. I have, we have approval in principle from the land. We had a lawyer investigate and you've written that you even saw we had the approval in principle. So. But that's, that's beside the point at this point. I am asked environmentalist. One house up here, as far as way we've offered to be, given another 100 feet from the trail, will that have any impact on the birds? And the answer was, three houses in an environmental enclave will not hurt, hit, hurt the birds whatsoever. That's you can't tell me that one house back here with an hooded lights, environmentally sensitive, is hurting the puffins. I think what you're doing is you're hijacking the puffins in the East Coast Trail to keep this so land for your private so you're park. So you up at Michelle. To keep That's why she flipped out, because she's tangled up at you. No, no, no. This is what um, you do. You do all this personal stuff. I don't even know who Michelle is. I have no idea anyway, what you're talking about. Um, but you just said that. And tomorrow you'll have found Facebook that we are somehow in with someone doing something weird. You guys have given you have nothing. Gone to we meetings, have tried you have everything. At people, you have arrested because people. I sat in a courtroom Lorna, when you. Please don't. Please don't do that in I sat in a courtroom when you made fun of a disabled you know what? senior you could, citizen. Actually, I'm not even going to answer because that's not true. I heard you that behind is me laughing at true. him. I heard you. Uh, we didn't even know who was on the stand. I Lorna, heard you. You have no idea what we're talking about. That's what I mean. What you do, instead of the facts, you go personal and you try to destroy people. But we're not willing to give up but our listen, land over it me. yet. It's the town. You just Nobody did it about this. ten times Nobody here, where I tried to talk it and you started me. attacking me. But you're the one doing this attacking. This isn't rational. Not, it's not how a good am way. I attacking you now when I'm telling you you can use your land as you always used it, as it was designated. You have no access, and that's just the facts. I'm sorry, it doesn't get any better than that, Lorna. I think this is a very, very important place for nature and for the animals, but as always, when you are in the middle of the eye of a cyclone, you're not seeing the whole thing. So it's something worth fighting for? Something worth dying for, almost. They think that they're going to wear the people who want to preserve that down. It's not going to happen. It's a battle for me that's not going to end. And I don't think uh, it's going to end for a lot of other people. Well, I think when you have controversy, there'll always be a side of it that's, you know, that's sensationalized. I, I would hope that we can find the common ground for all groups that have concerns, that someday soon we can get those concerns out and discuss them and come to terms with it. 
I have invested a lot personally and there's times it's been really, really tough to the point where, you know, I had episodes of really severe depression and there were times when I just said to myself and everybody else, I'm done, I'm done. And then you just come back. But you know, there's also been really amazing things too. You know, friendships have been made, but at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about Ragged Beach, it's about puffins, it's about wildlife, it's about this spectacular reserve. That's what it's about. I don't know, I mean, maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe they will push us out of here, but I would feel bad about that. I feel like we need to hold our ground, but try to keep it civilized. I talk to people more, but I'm trying to be helpful about it, let people know the truth, and ignore social media. I don't know where to go with that. So I kind of have some hope if we could hold out. The ecological system is so sensitive here, and it's all here. It's really here, you can feel it, you can see it. But we are there, Puffin Patrol and all the organization, we try to protect it. And it's growing, it's doing well. Like, what's your dream situation yeah. for how this all ends up? Let me quote Jack Nicholson. He told me, Jürgen, in a perfect world, everything would be really perfect. But we are not in a perfect world, so what can I do? What can I change? Of course I do want to stop the Puffin Patrol. Of course I would not see any dead birds anymore. Of course I would like to have people respect and things like this. But the world isn't so. You know, it is as it is. So. Oh. Uh -huh.